If you've ever opened a Protestant Bible, you've likely noticed a major difference from our own Catholic Bible. Their Old Testament has fewer books than ours. Well, that and their Bible actually looks like it's been used instead of sitting on a shelf for years, but that's a topic for another day. Whereas the Catholic Bible contains 73 books, the Protestant version only contains 66. Making things even more confusing, Orthodox Bibles contain 76, 78, or even 79 books depending on the tradition. Where does this discrepancy come from, and who's ultimately right? This is Catholicism in Focus. While it may seem entirely foreign to us today, there was actually a time in the Church before the Bible existed. For centuries, in fact, the Church was guided by the Hebrew Scriptures and a random bunch of recently written texts that varied from place to place. God most certainly inspired many texts throughout our history, but we weren't exactly given a table of contents to know which ones they were. Which is why, for more than three centuries, there was no official canon of Scripture. Rather, every local area had its own version of the Bible. Some included books that were later removed, things like 1 Clement and the Didache, while others originally excluded certain books that we consider canonical today, such as James or Revelation. As the Church began to develop in many different directions over this time, heretical ideas like Arianism and Docetism forced the Church to work together beyond the local level, convening councils and promulgating doctrine. There was a growing desire, particularly in the West, to formalize and legally assert the teachings of the Church. To do so, the Church set three criteria for accepting works into the New Testament. To be considered inspired and worthy of entry into the canon, a text must 1. be associated with an apostle, 2. be widely circulated and prominent in liturgies, and 3. contain theology consistent with our understanding of God. Various lists can be found dating back to as early as Marcion in the year 140, but the earliest extant list of the books that appear as they do in the Catholic Bible today can be found in the letter from St. Athanasius in 367. This list was later included at the Councils of Carthage in 397 and 419, and reasserted a thousand years later in the Council of Florence in the 15th century. At least in the Western Church, that is more than 1,600 years of consistent teaching on the canon of Scripture. So how is there still such discrepancy in the Christian world today? It's complicated. The issue must be understood on two fronts for two very different reasons. We'll start with the Orthodox Churches first. One thing that is often forgotten about the relationship between the Eastern and Western Churches is that the East simply doesn't share the same level of legalism that the West does. Whereas Catholics want to define and categorize everything, setting rules for everything under the sun, the Orthodox Churches have always placed a greater emphasis on mystery. And so, while the Council of Carthage did list the 73 books of the Bible in 397, and the Eastern Church had no objection to this, it also didn't treat this teaching as definitively closing the canon either. Particularly in Antioch, local customs continued, and texts like 3rd and 4th Maccabees, the Prayer of Manasseh, and Psalm 151, things that were not listed at Carthage, continued to be a part of their liturgies. For them, there is no need to make definitive distinctions between inspired and uninspired books as if it were a black and white issue. Instead, they recognize a gradation of inspiration over a wide range of texts. It's why even today, believe it or not, there are many individual Eastern churches in communion with one another that have slightly variant versions of both Testaments. It doesn't make sense to our Western legalistic mindset, but it is a tradition that is as old, if not older than our own. This is quite different, however, from the issue with the Protestant canon of Scripture. Rather than add to the canon of the Council of Carthage with a more ancient tradition, the Protestant Bible removed from it. To understand this, we must look to the formation of the Old Testament itself. For those in the ancient Greek-speaking world, either Christian or Jew, the only version of the Old Testament available was the Septuagint, the Greek version of the Old Testament compiled during the Greek occupation of the Jews in the centuries before the birth of Christ. It was the version of Scripture that Jesus himself would have known and is cited by rabbis for centuries. And just as there is an affinity for the Latin language in the Catholic Church, so too is there an affinity for the Hebrew language for some Jews. The original scriptures were written in Hebrew, not Greek, and so in the early Middle Ages, there was a growing desire among some Jews to recapture what was seen as the more authentic version of the text. 
between the 6th and 10th centuries, Jewish scribes called Masoretes began compiling, translating, and preserving these scriptures in Hebrew. Because the books of Tobit, Judith, Baruch, Sirach, Wisdom, and 1st and 2nd Maccabees were written during the Hellenistic period, a time when Jews spoke and wrote only in Greek, these books were never recorded in Hebrew and thus seen as inauthentic and removed. When Luther came along and began studying scripture, seeking to reform the church to its earliest roots, he naturally looked to the Jews of his day, believing that they had the oldest, most authentic version of scripture. This, of course, was unfortunately incorrect, as the Masoretic text is actually a thousand years younger than the Septuagint, and so he falsely concluded that the Catholic Church must have added inauthentic books to justify our doctrines. And so, following medieval Jews rather than the ancient church, when Luther and the other Protestants issued their own translation of the Bible, they removed seven books that had guided the Christian church since the beginning, leaving their total at just 66. A decision, unlike the Orthodox Jews, that signifies a distinct break from tradition. Really, it's just one example of many of how even though Catholics and Orthodox Christians can disagree on some things, we're never really too far apart. While we would argue that the canon was set in 397 and we have remained faithful to that tradition for more than 1600 years, we can also recognize some truth in the plurality of ancient canons. Technically speaking, the canon was never actually promulgated at an ecumenical council until Trent, and so the East has always had its own distinct and completely valid method from ours. On the other hand, the idea of removing texts from the canon of taking it upon oneself to revise the local councils of one's own church, going against a tradition that had existed since before the time of Christ, that's a bit more problematic and ultimately the attitude that doomed the Reformation. Who are we, especially when dealing with sacred scripture, to believe that we know more than our spiritual mothers and fathers that came before us and compiled this incredible book? God may not have given us an official list, but when Christians do the same thing for more than a thousand years, it's probably a good idea not to mess with it.